Leviathan was Thomas Hobbes's fictitious, all-powerful ruler, a character created to force order on a chaotic and lawless society. Many people think of today's EU as a sort of Leviathan, which has built a formidable economic government to meet the challenges of the Euro crisis. Besides printing banknotes and setting interest rates, the EU also influences national politics, from state spending on health services to things like pensions and savings. Not much has been done, however, to counterbalance this gradual gain in the EU's power. So the Leviathan project is about asking, how do we hold the EU accountable? In the most basic sense, accountability means that decision makers have to somehow justify their decisions. But most citizens have a broader understanding of what that means. Beyond requiring decision makers to explain their conduct, accountability is about contesting or even changing their decisions. What we have observed is that this kind of accountability, the ability to challenge how the EU economic system works, is scarce in the current structure of EU economic governance. During the economic crisis, Euro area countries created a permanent bailout fund for member states that were in financial trouble, the European Stability Mechanism, the so-called ESM. In a nutshell, the ESM offers cheap loans, but only if countries agree to certain structural reforms. So the governments request bailouts, and the Euro area finance ministers decide essentially who gets them. Structural reforms are then overseen by the so-called Troika, the European Commission, the European Central Bank, and the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. But how can decisions of this Troika be contested? The ESM is not part of European law, so the European Parliament has no formal control over aid or conditions. At most, it can summon the Troika to share information. The capacity of national parliaments to hold their governments accountable for bailout decisions also differs a lot between different Euro area countries. The German parliament seems to have much more power in holding the ESM to account than the parliaments of smaller countries like Greece or Ireland. It's also difficult to challenge the ESM in court. The ESM's validity and its compatibility with the EU law was challenged in several national courts and even before the European Court of Justice itself. But since the ESM is not part of European law, the EU Charter of Fundamental Rights, and particularly the right to effective judicial protection, was deemed inapplicable to ESM decisions. So we might therefore lack both political and legal means to challenge economic decisions. So our project asks three main questions. First, what kind of standards of accountability do we need for EU economic decision makers? Second, we try to build a map. What are the different routes available at the national and at the European level to challenge economic decisions? Finally, we try and look for gaps in the map. What kind of institutional and legal reforms could address these gaps? In short, we want to use high-level scientific work for an important public goal, to ensure that the EU's economic government can properly be held to account.